Hello, everybody. Welcome to another uh, little podcast video here of Let's Talk. I am Carlos Salazar. People know me as Trey also. Uh, that's my nickname. Um, today, we have a very, 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 very special person that I've known for about four years. Yeah, that sounds about right. Four years. Wow. Yeah. You introduced me to all of this, actually. Oh, great. Yeah. And so <laughs> I want that. There's going to disclaimer for that one in a little bit. I did all of it. All right. So um, this is Buck. Buck, say hi to everybody. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi, guys. <laughs> oh, all right, good. I'm so shy. This is so exciting. This. Oh, the crowd's excited about you. All right. Um, Buck, uh, I will have his uh, information, his Instagram in his uh, on the uh, page. From that, you do have a link tree on your Instagram, right? Yeah. Okay, so from there, you can go and link to all of his other um, um, My other platforms, other platforms, sites, other yeah. sites. Yeah, he does do OnlyFans. You do do you do do you do OnlyFans? You do you have Twitter? Um, what else do you have? I TikTok, have Instagram, TikTok a little bit, yeah, little bit. and also a just for fans. Oh, okay, just yeah. for fans also. Okay, yeah, because cool. uh, yeah. I do I like a lot of kink stuff that's not always allowed on OnlyFans because oh. of their terms of service. So, uh, just for fans is like, yeah, yeah. OnlyFans has been a real bitch lately. Yeah, they're so stingy. It's weird. It's like you guys do know the assignment, right? Right. Like, exactly. <laughs> I think it's funny. Um, I had this one guy that got his video taken down because he was getting spanked. And I was like, really? How He's hard like, was the spanking? I don't know. I guess it was just like was <laughs> some spanking. Like, it, I guess it was just a spanking video. And I don't know. I was like, oh, I didn't know they did that. I was like, okay, I need to. I wonder if that. he was like on the ground. There was like a 12 foot ladder and the guy just jumped off the top of the 12 foot ladder and, and just, just like. Yeah. That would have been kind of hot. Just some kidding. <laughs> over, like crazy over the top WWE style spanks. Yeah. You know about those. Yes. <laughs> as a as a matter of fact. Yes. This is a PTSD trauma withdrawal. Like reliving. I'm just like reprocessing. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start let's start with from the beginning of how we met because I think that's a pretty interesting story because um Ooh, yeah. Your your life was totally opposite of what it is now. Oh my god, it was so puritanical. It was. <laughs> and I remember I don't remember if I saw you on Instagram or if I saw you on Twitter. Insta. Insta. Yeah. Instagram and I messaged you. You had done did you do a photo shoot with somebody else and that's no, why I was reaching no, out to you? No, I was just doing cosplay stuff. Oh, that's and... right, because that's when cosplay was really big and I was yeah. I saw you with a uh uh, Spider-Man? Spider-Man, yeah. And, I, and I, I reached out because I wanted it. I was like, oh, I need to take pictures of that. I want to take pictures yeah. of that. Yeah. You were like, oh, my God, I never worked with a cosplayer before. I would love to work with you. That's uh, what it was. You're based in Austin. I think the first thing that you said was, holy shit, you're based in Austin? Like, exclamation point, question mark. <laughs> yeah, because no one is in Austin. Right? No one that I want to work with is in Austin, usually. Yeah, I understand. Um. So you came over, we did this really great photo shoot, and we were together, we start. I don't know how we got into the conversation of OnlyFans, which I guess it always goes to that, but I think we just talked about it a little bit. Yeah. And what were you doing at the time? That so I was selling cars at the time. I was selling... Super successful. Oh, thank you. You were, though. Remember? I, was, yeah. I remember all that. I, I think over three and a half years, I sold like about a thousand plus cars, and so that was very cool. I got yeah. to meet a lot of really cool people and do a good job for them. Right. Yeah. And then I remember, if I remember correctly, what was – there was a catalyst for you quitting that. I mean, you didn't want to. I remember you said you really liked it, and then – I was afraid. Yeah. Um. So that was the second or maybe third time that we hung out. Right. The first time that we hung out, I didn't even have an OnlyFans. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You were – you. I was like – I was talking to you. People were talking to me. Like they were like, "Hey, you should get one." Uh, I would totally subscribe to you if you had one. And I was like, "What is an OnlyFans?" And so, like, I was like googling it, and I found out what it was. I was like, "Oh, okay." So that's what these other t guys are like doing. Yeah, and I because I saw it keep popping up and stuff. I was like, "That's interesting." Okay, and so uh, I talked to you about it, and you're like, "Yeah, like." People like they make really good money doing it. They make a full career out of it and a full living. And I was seeing that from you. I was seeing that from other people that you've worked with. And I was like, wow, I think that would be fun. Yeah. Like, fuck it. Why not? Right. And right. then I started one. 
That's I right. I went home and I started one that day. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So then what happened was at work, they found out about it. No, actually. Uh, at work, it, they never knew. Oh, they never knew. Yeah. I was just um, at my desk and I was miserable. Because this is like during the 2020, this is like right, the pandemic. COVID. Yeah. This is like the height of the pandemic. Yeah. Pandemic. And this is before anyone knew really what was going on. Right. And it was like, I might die. Yeah. I, in my office and like. I've been working like crazy since I was 14, like right. nonstop. So like I never really had any awesome youth experiences, you know, like I was just always working. Right. And so it was, I was kind of like seeing this door open for like, oh, here's a beautiful life outside of a workspace. Right. A nine to five where you're going to work and you hate your life every day. Yeah. Well, well I was, you hate your life, but. Oh, no, I did. I was miserable. I had everything that I thought I wanted. Like I had money, I had at the time uh, a partner that I really liked. Um, I had you had a nice car. I remember that? Yeah, it was fun. Uh, and like I had all the, th the things, you know, but I wasn't emotionally fulfilled. Right. And so, like, I think uh, doing OnlyFans and sex work and porn and all that has opened up this door of overcoming my own self limiters like shame and like all these things that hold us back as to what we're not supposed to do. Quote unquote. Correct. Um, uh, really stripping all of that away and getting down to, um, the core of just doing what I want. Cause it's what I want to do with my life. And I think everyone during the pandemic was like, what am I doing with my life? Like, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Like so many people went through career changes yeah. And um, mine, that's exactly what I went through, too. And I'm so grateful for it. It's been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And you've met a lot of interesting people since then. Oh, you're one of them. <laughs> 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 you're one of my favorite people that I've ever worked with. So, OK, so then we uh, so you started doing OnlyFans. And then I remember um, you started going you went out with us on a trip to Nebraska one time. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And that was you. Oh, who else? Jared. Jared. Yeah. Jared. Yeah. Yeah. Jaren Strange. That's and right. Who is that other? Luke. No. Wasn't his name Luke? No. No. He had a clover tattoo. Oh, God. I can't remember. He was Grant. Grant. That's right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't yeah. his last name was, but yeah, Grant. And that was a fun trip. And I remember we, we talked a lot during that trip also about OnlyFans and what you were going to do with it. And Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that was right before I quit my job because I started OnlyFans and I had the other job. And then my OnlyFans was making as much as I was making at the other job. And I was just like, came over here and I was like, I think I want to quit. And but I'm so scared of doing this because this is such a wildly different yeah, lifestyle. There's, there's no uh, there was no guarantee. Yeah. At all. And uh, yeah, I just uh, you jumped in. Yeah. Head, head first. first. Head it, was, first. it was awesome. Yeah. Good. So I'm going to go back a little bit more now because that's that's pretty much the story of how we met. We'll talk a little bit more about things that we've uh, worked with together. But um, so where are you from? Originally? Originally. I'm from Michigan. Ireland? Michigan. <laughs> Ireland? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you have no, red I'm... hair, but you're Mexican. Uh, Yeah. So uh, not quite. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are. Stop it. Uh, my dad's side is from Portugal. Oh, okay. That's why. Cause of Spanish. Yeah. That's what yeah. I mean. Spanish. But yeah. I'm white as a ghost. You are. Yeah. I, I remember customers we... like that would come in the car business. They'd be like, I'm here to see, uh, my, my full name, which is a Spanish last name. And then I would show up me like young, like barely 22, <laughs> like white as a ghost. They'd be like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hi, I'm hola. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Name one experience that you probably would have never done had you not been in OnlyFans. Ooh. It doesn't have to be sexual. Just yeah. just an experience that yeah. you were like, you would have never done that had you not uh I don't done think this. I would have fully found myself mm -hmm. one, but two, uh a lot of traveling that I've done. Really? I've done so much traveling that it's like it's just been I would have never been able to do this i feel like i wouldn't have been able to travel as much as i do until i retired right had, had i stayed in a corporate right world corporate job and now is like that, that because of money or just time um uh, the jobs that i was working were very demanding and yeah. so like um it was mostly time yeah like taking time away because mm -hmm. um back then i had plenty of money but 
uh, couldn't do anything with it. Yeah, no time to do anything with it. Right. Except for buy expensive stuff and shit away all that money. <laughs> right, right. You had a cool yeah. apartment, though. Yeah, yeah. I still have that place. I've been there for like five years. I Dang. love it. I like it. Yeah. yeah. I'm it's not a, It is cool. You yeah. got the patio. Yeah. And natural yeah. light. No, actually, it gets terrible natural light. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, based on how the position of the sun is. Oh, and the, roof the way your root, yes. Yeah. Okay, so so uh, you moved to Austin right out of high school, or what? Uh, I stayed in Michigan for like two years, and then I moved to Austin when I was 20. Did you go to school or anything? No, no. Uh, I wanted to. I got accepted into an art school in California that's like the best animation school in the world. And by the way, I'm going to cut right there, because why would you be accepted to art school? Why? Because I'm an artist. I exactly. draw, I paint, I animate, I do storyboard. And, all and you're really stuff. freaking good. Aw, thank you. I remember because <laughs> remember when you were trying to teach Jaron how to draw? Yeah, I did. And I actually have the Polaroid of me teaching him how to draw in my in my room still. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I saved that Polaroid because it was a special moment and it was so cool. Yeah, yeah. that was. I remember you guys were up forever try to teach him how to draw a man or something yeah no, and you're it, like you want to try it i'm like no i can't <laughs> you're like i'm going to bed i'm going to <laughs> you just like it's 9 p.m i'm out of here <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> like i'm too old for this shit <laughs> it's like put out your cigarette and damn someone's kids. neck <laughs> you <Yeah>. damn kids <laughs> <laughs> anyway you meddling <laughs> kids so you get to school you, you you got accepted to school yeah i got accepted to this this university and it was my dream school but it was like ungodly expensive like how art schools are yeah. they're private for profit i think the tuition at the time was like fifty-two thousand a year holy shit and then uh you had to for your first year uh live in a dorm and it was like sixteen thousand dollars for the dorm oh my god and so like yeah. you're looking at almost seventy thousand dollars just yeah. in your first year and like back then the household that i came from i think my mom made like fifteen thousand in a year <sighs> yeah so like, there was no way. Yeah, I was just like, there is no fucking <laughs> way <laughs> yeah. that is happening. And so um, right now I'm putting together a business, actually. Mm -hmm. So this is going to come full circle in a second. And uh, we have some products that I can't talk about, but we're about to release soon. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm going to try to build it out into automation and then actually uh, fulfill my dream and go to that school. Oh, uh, that nice. art school And uh, uh, graduate. I want to graduate from that art school. It. I worked so hard to get into it, right? And um, it, it it was a extremely high honor that I was accepted in, yeah. Because I think they only accept a hundred people per year. Nice. And um, so I want to get back in. Right. I want to go and I want to do finish. it. Yeah, yeah. I'll be thirty if I do it. Oh, but you know, it'll what? be a few years. Uh, but I'm not thirty yet. I know. No, but I, but, <laughs> but I know it seems. I know because you're turning thirty that it seems like you're gonna get. Like it's oh, old. I got a few years until then, but but I know it's not mean. old. Oh, it's so young. Like yeah. thirty is so young. I would kill to be thirty again. Oh yeah. Like uh, I I realized how young forties. Like uh, I see a lot of people living their best life in their forties right now. Yeah. And they uh they've done everything that they want to do, and now they're just kind of like coasting. Yeah. You know. Uh, but that's so nice. Oh my god, it looks amazing. Yeah. I can't wait to do my forties. My forties are gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah. You're and gonna be one of those uh. uh one of those silver foxes, silver foxes, that aged yes. like fine wine. No, those one of those Fire Island uh, gays. Oh my god! No, I think I'm gonna be like the troll under someone's bridge, just <laughs> robbing them of their gold. Oh, their gold. <laughs> Give me your gold. Give it to me. Give it to me. So when you moved to Austin, the first job that you got was a car dealer, car, car yeah, yeah, salesman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And how did you get that gig? So uh, before that, I was a professional illustrator, and mm. I was behind on stuff by like two, three months. And so I had a, I had a lot of people emailing me very angrily, like, hey, I paid you hundreds of dollars for this months ago. Where the fuck is my shit? It's like, I'm still behind by like two, three months, pal. And oh, like, wow. it, I basically just refunded everyone all of their money and just was like, had a big meltdown slash panic attack. This job was the worst job, was the art illustration one. I worked that one every single day. I didn't take Christmas off. It was every single day, except for the days that I moved to Austin. Uh, for a year and a half, and it was 20 hours a day, wow. I slept and worked at my bed. Like, my desk was right next to my bed. And so, like, I worked until exhaustion passed out and then woke up. And it's just started again. Right back. Yeah, it was it was stupid. 
It yeah. was crazy. And I burnt out so hard. Yeah. And so I had a mental breakdown because I moved to Austin a few months before this point. Uh-huh. And my roommate was like, dude, you can sell art. You should you should go sell cars or houses or something. Like you can sell. You should you should go do something like that. All right. And so I was like, Well, uh, I'm still like uh, I was twenty at the time, so I was like might as well start with cars. I think that would be easier to get into than houses. And who's going to buy a house with a 20 year old? Like, right. Yeah. You'd have to be like smoking crack. Yeah. You're like, <laughs> buy this. Yeah. Let's trust this 20 year old kid. 2.3 million house. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> get real. <laughs> so, what was the first car dealership you worked at? Uh, that one. I, or what kind of car was it? It was an American brand. Oh, American. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, nice. and a whole lot of pickup trucks and pick em up trucks. Yeah. Pick so, a lot trucks. of cowboys. It, yes, they're steers and queers steers right? and queers i love it i love it <laughs> okay so you moved to austin you're um, you did all this you know you um started working at the dealership you're having a great time you meet me and i totally ruin everything the <laughs> and now <laughs> what would you say the uh uh the father of bad decisions yes that is me the father <laughs> yes. of bad decisions um when you started doing only fans you uh it was a hard it was a hard gig to get into correct like when you first started like you were trying to find your your footing um it was a slow gradual build but it wasn't i honestly just ha- it, at the time instagram was working really well in my favor okay and um i wasn't trying really to do anything with it at the very beginning it was kind of like ah, oh, fuck it People yeah. want it. So, I mean, I, I could use this to pay like a few bills or like my electric bill or like my car payment or something cool like that, you know, just cover a little bit. A little bit, yeah. And then um, pretty quickly, uh, so I did it for a month. And uh, pretty quickly after that first month, I did Twitter. <laughs> oh my God, this is a funny story. <laughs> so I did Twitter. And so on Instagram, I had like, two three thousand followers it wasn't anything crazy Uh and so i started twitter and i filmed a video with my friend back in michigan and we're dressed as superheroes and we're like fucking on the couch and stuff like that and um we were watching a movie as well and stuff like that so like you can kind of hear the movie in the background anyways i dropped this video on twitter uh before going to bed of us fucking on the couch. Now, was it a long that. clip or Hold short? on. This is where it gets really funny. Oh, okay. So it was a short clip. It was okay. like like just like 15, 20 seconds long. Okay. And I woke up the next morning. It had like four or 500,000 views. Oh my God. And I was just like, what the fuck? And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. And I was just like staring at my phone like, what have I done? <laughs> and so I click on the video to just watch it and just like see. <laughs> Uh, I'm getting my dick sucked, and in the background, you just hear Chewbacca screaming, <laughs> screeching. It is so fucking loud. Like Chewbacca is screaming, <laughs> yeah. Like, and you just hear that in this clip, like so fucking loud. And I am just like, oh my fucking god, I cannot believe that I put this out into the world. And you can't take it back. No, no, That's no, it. takesies, backsies. Yeah. <laughs> It's done. It's oh on there. Oh my god! It was I. I was laughing so hard I was crying. I couldn't believe it. And I checked my OnlyFans and uh, I <laughs> got a bunch of fans. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I just was like, "That's when stuff changed." So it. I hate that it was an overnight success. I like to grind and work my ass off. Right, shit. right. Uh, this one just kind of fell in my lap, and I got very lucky with. The internet at the time, algorithms being very easy to understand and not really even... Well, especially during COVID, it was very laxed. Uh, yeah. And then. like, um, what I what I do is like, if you search for it, you'll find me. Yeah. Now it's like, if you search for it, you probably won't find me. You'll find a I need million you to, other things. I need you to pin that video on oh, your I Twitter d- page. I deleted it because <gasps> I got involved with that real estate company and they're oh, like, hey, you got to pick one or the it. other. Yeah. Oh. And so I deleted all of my previous stuff. It's going back But out. I'll send it to you. <laughs> yeah. Now. Okay. I'll get a text <laughs> like uh, f- at 3 a.m. like, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so late, Carlos. It's so late, Oh, Carlos. my <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I sent this to you at noon. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, all right. With your OnlyFans, you had that overnight success, and now I, are you trying to figure out like how to build from that? Is that how you kind of got to where you are today? Because I know you started out with cosplay, and it's kind of like morphed into now more leather, more kink BDSM yeah. stuff. Yeah. So how did that transition happen? Like, what what um, did you just start having to think about? Um, how to get a better niche or were, you, were people asking for it? How did that happen? Honestly, I just kept uh, doing what I want to do. Yeah. And um, I've had, I'm, uh, I'm a very imaginative person. And so I just had all of these fantasies of things that I wanted to do and things that I wanted to experience and try. Mm -hmm. And so as I kept going and doing OnlyFans and posting and, exploring um myself uh in different concepts and stuff like that uh it just gra gradually um kept snowballing into what it is now which is like a mixture of so many different things that i really really like doing mm -hmm. um and so i think as i got more comfortable with it uh i just was doing more and more and more and i'm <laughs> It's kind of wild, all the stuff that I've done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think another thing that people uh, would like to know is that you actually also make a lot of your own costumes, right? Um, no. I thought uh, you made a couple. I, I, uh, or you tried to. No, I, um, I, no. I, I was talking about doing that. No, oh, I thought you did. No, no. I'm not talented enough in that department. Oh, yeah. Listen, but you do have somebody that makes your stuff. You know what I do make what? uh for people on my like OnlyFans and stuff? I I uh draw and illustrate a lot of porn. Oh. And I release that to my fans as like a little special thank you of like, I made this for you. That's and cool. Do like, you put your own like is it you in there that you're drawing yourself? It's just uh characters. Or is it just it's, characters? It's, it's yeah, it's just guys. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um with the the kink side of it, what what was one thing that you kind of discovered about yourself while doing that that side of oh my uh, god, I know. Porn? Yeah, um, one of the biggest things I would say with kink that I discovered about myself was just uh, how much I needed to let go, right? Because I am like always in control mm -hmm. and always having to be in control. Because I'm like, uh, I'm very much so the captain of my own ship, and I'm just like. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's the grindstone. Like, you know, and so uh kink has been an incredible way for me to let go, like and just let go of control, give that to another person. Right. Um, and just kind of let them just take over everything. What was your um, what was it like? Amazing. What was it like for your first collab that you did that you were actually like, I guess, submissive with, with, and you let someone take you know, over? You know, it was actually the one in Nebraska with those other two guys. Oh, that's right. Yeah, when, uh, Brandon. Yeah, Brandon and Brandon's hilarious. Oh. He is so what funny. What was that other kid's name? Oh, dude, I don't know. Oh, I can't remember. Gosh, that was like four years ago. That's yeah. why. But uh, anyways, um, we did a scene. It was like a photo shoot in the basement of mm -hmm. that house. And it looked all dungeony, and then uh, I was wearing a superhero suit, and they had me tied up, and like they were on top of me in different positions, and like the photos came out great. Oh yeah, those were really yeah. good. I remember that. Yeah, that was that was. So really that was your first. How did you like that experience? Oh, it was so much fun. Yeah, um, those guys were great too. It was so cool because you had like the handcuffs and like the rope, and like I always fantasized about it and stuff like that, but I didn't have the comfortability of asking someone to do that with me or for me or with me. Right. And so uh, here I am uh, on a trip and I have these two really hot guys <laughs> tying me up and I'm just like, Ooh, <laughs> spicy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was so neat that I got to bring that fantasy to life and experience it and have fun with it. It was so cool. Yeah, yeah. it was cool. Yeah. That was a fun trip. Those guys were hilarious. And those photos came out amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've posted those on my OnlyFans. I, 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 I have, have them on my computer. I can send them to you. No, I have I have all that stuff still. I just oh, I just okay. I, I'm just wondering. I mean, it's I've had OnlyFans for so long that I forget if I post something and then, okay. you know, and I'm sure I did. But those were great pictures. Yeah. Um yeah. so after that happened, it, um 
what give me another scenario that that was kind of like a mind boggling like you're like oh my god this is so intense this is great i love it <laughs> that was like the worst button <laughs> i know that was the worst button this one I'm that's to... the one i was looking at this is the one i was looking for oh my yeah really uh i would say um that's a good question. The other experience that I had in kink where like I was able to let go and that was a great experience for me. Yeah. Um, I would say there was a, there was a guy that I used to hang out with and he has like a dungeon in his house and like he, it's like a crazy fucking dungeon. Mm -hmm. It is like, I think he's put like over $30,000 into this BDSM dungeon. Wow. Like, yeah, he's crazy successful. Um, and he does OnlyFans and stuff like that. He's the VP of a company. Of like, course. Like, this dude is yeah, crazy successful. Right. And he doesn't show his face, but it's still incredible to see someone that successful doing OnlyFans because they... Like, they don't need it. to. Yeah. yeah, but that's like... They, they like it, so yeah. why not? No, he's having a ton of fun with it. Right. Um, so he brought me over to his place, and um, he basically uh, tied me up, put me in, like, all sorts of machines. Like, I was tied up to, like, I was, like, strapped into, like, this chair slash sling. There is a uh, fuck machine just, like, going to town on me. And, like, I'm, like, I have, like, a gas mask on that is, like, switching between pure oxygen and uh, poppers. And it's going back and forth, like, every few minutes or something like that. Um, and then there was, like, something hooked up to my nipples that was just, it, like, stimulating that. And like, um, there was, there was so much, there was, there was so, so much going on there. It was crazy. Yeah. And then there was like some sort of thing going on my dick as well. I was like, I was just hooked up to a bunch of machines and it was honestly, I have never felt so amazing in my whole life. That was out of this world. Now is this scene on your OnlyFans? Uh, yeah. Okay. There you go. So yeah. If somebody wants to see that. They can. And you might have to do some deep scrolling, but <laughs> It is, yeah, it is a serious scene. Um, yeah, and it is, it was, it was unreal. I never knew that I could experience something physically like that. That was so, it, it's incredibly stimulating. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it Well, I'm was, sure it is because you're kind of like, you can't see anything, you can't hear anything. Yeah. Like, you're just in this, you just have your body to kind of feel everything. Dude, yeah, it was an unreal experience. And like, that and also just like being in that like type of scene, like I just had to let go and give in and like allow. Right. And um, wow, I, there's just so much that you just learn and letting go. Yeah. And how good it feels to let go. Like, well, yeah, because ooh, every day in our life, all we do is worry. <laughs> yeah. That's all we do. All we do 24 uh, seven. Well, yeah. And so it was, uh, it was, aw it was just, it was an incredible experience. Like, what it felt like it was it was wild insane shit so yeah. this so with here in austin because you've ob you obviously live here in austin is there a big scene for that do you do you there's find, a decent size scene here do you um, have other like um like do you have friends that are here that are into it or comrades that you can talk to about it or because i mean this isn't actually something that you can talk community here yeah that's uh you know and so uh i wouldn't it depends i would say it's a really good size community. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, there's only a few people that I'm interested in playing with, though. In the right, community. right. Most of my friends that I hang out with are in the community, and that's how we became friends. Mm -hmm. We're very close, and they're just genuinely awesome people. See, that's what I'm talking right. about because I feel like you know, with this kind of stuff, you know, you want to have somebody to talk to about this, and it's yeah. not like you can bring this up at a, you know, yeah. go to dinner with high school friends or. <laughs> college friends and be like hey dude i just got milked yesterday and <laughs> yeah we just like going to uh bars that are kink oriented bars and spaces uh -huh. um just because they're more accepting of the more weird and more queer parts of the gay community and non-judgmental and like typically it's you, you, everyone is going to be extremely nice to you. you can go up to anybody and just say hi and start a conversation and uh be received well and uh, I do that same with everyone else that comes and approaches me. And it's just, I, I enjoy that space so much more than the more circuity type places. Yeah. I, I fit in anywhere. Right. Uh, so I, I like both, but I really do prefer like hanging out with the King community and 
furry community and pup community that's here in Austin is they're awesome people. They're funny. Yeah. And they're just fun to hang out with. I like them. Yeah. And I've, I've met a couple of, uh, pups. Um, I did, I've Woof. done a couple, uh, I know, right. <laughs> I've, I've done a couple of photo shoots with, with, uh, with some guys and, wow. um, it's always so much fun. Like they're the nicest guys. They are, you know, super sweet, yeah. super fun, n- no hangups, you know, Yeah, and, um, very just, not judgmental at all. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I'm just kind of a weird guy, you know? And so it's so nice to be around people that are just so they're not, it's not that they're not non-judgmental about it they're just encouraging of it right and so i i I love feeding off of that energy where you can just be unapologetically unapologetically yourself and everyone around you is just full of encouragement to go and do that and do more and Mm -hmm. it's 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 a really cool sphere to be in i like it a lot good so now that you're kind of you're you know you're, you're pretty successful in just for fans only fans right now is that your full time gig right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I it took me a long time to stop messing around with doing like two different things at once because I was doing I was balancing uh, sales and doing a sales career and juggling that with OnlyFans and Just for Fans and it was just like I got the last time that I was laid off I was just like I am I'm done giving these corporate entities my life and my time yeah i'm just gonna give it i'm gonna double down on what i do and i'm gonna build businesses based around what i do and um that's entirely what i'm doing now and it's it's so much better um yeah because you it isn't until you start doing something like OnlyFans that you realize how underpaid you are in any other job where you're working for someone else they are always trying to hire you and pay you the least, least that they amount. possibly they can. Yeah. And you're always trying to make the most that you possibly can. And so it's like, they just don't value. And then as soon as they can, they'll lay you off. Oh yeah. And they'll yeah. find somebody cheaper or they'll just automate the position or send it overseas or, uh, there's a million different things or they'll sell the company. There's a million different things. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's nothing personal. It's just business. And I, after doing it for so many years, I, I am very personal about everything that I do and my intentions and uh, that's how I like to do business. And so I was a disconnect and I was like, all right. It's true. It is true. Um, That is one of the downfalls of society right now. I think is like, there's no, uh, there's no love for the hard worker. It's like, we're going to work you to to death until it's the snake eating itself. Yeah. And it's so, it's so counter intuitive or counter, I don't know how to say it. It's just counterproductive because, you know, if people made more money and people, everybody worked the same and corporations actually cared about their, their employees, then I think the world would be a better place. Because people have more money to spend. Yeah. And more time to be with their families and more like, it's just so people work themselves to the bone. And I just, I can't do that anymore. I've already told Ben that like, I'm like, look, like after this, just shoot, put, take me the back and, shoot me <laughs> i'm not i don't want to get a job i don't want to <laughs> you know what it reminds me of like the society that we live in have you ever seen that meme where it's like this dog holding a ball he's like no take only throw <laughs> he's like holding yes. onto the ball he's like, won't give it away i feel like that's just the capitalistic society we live in it's crazy and uh yeah they, like these companies are like they don't want to pay their workers more they only want them to make more money you yeah. know and they want you to spend more, but they don't want to pay you more. And it's yeah. just oh. it's stupid. It's just a circle. Anyway, yeah. where do you see yourself, let's say, five years from now? Oh, doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, absolutely. I didn't realize. I thought doing porn, you were only good when you're like 18 to 22. No. No. Not anymore. You're good for... there. I, I know some people in their 60s that yeah. are making five times what I make. Yeah. And it's just like... There's longevity, but you got to be smart about it. You know, you gotta- absolutely, and uh, you have to be flexible with what you're willing to do and wanting to do. And I think what I see successful in most people that are doing it for a long time, uh, they understand what good concepts are and they execute them really well. Yeah, yeah. their ideas are really good. Oh yeah, and they, yeah. Well, what's good about you is you can you're still step bro for a little while. I mean, you still have a long way to go before you're a stepdad. 
Thanks. I'm trying to be a good bro for homie. <laughs> <laughs> you still got a little way to go. He's like, Woof. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, thank you for coming. Thank you for talking with us today. Um, we, you know, thanks for everybody listening. But um, we will definitely do this again some other time whenever your stuff comes out. Right? I mean, oh, whenever yeah. anything happens, we'll, we can talk again about Absolutely. all that. I think that would be cool. I'll be giving you a bunch of free stuff to use. and For photo of, shoots, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He's easier to get here because he literally lives about 15 minutes away. So Not even. Maybe, yeah, 15 minutes. All yeah. Right. It was kind of traffic you today. 10, 15. Yeah, traffic was terrible. Yeah, awful. Yeah. And so get here. I don't know. And I feel bad because I'm like, be here at 6. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, <laughs> okay. Anyway, well, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you all again another time. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.